and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. In today's episode, we have what was actually a request from one of our live streams. Basically, somebody said it would be cool if we found a way to kind of hide the fact that you're using like a cell phone or an iPad or something when you're at a LARP event. And I thought this was an amazing idea. So I've created a magical tome. It isn't just any magical tome, but it also holds just all of the knowledge of human existence. That's right, I made it fit an iPad. <laughs> in fact, the, the script I'm using for this show, is, it's in the book, it's in here right now. And I'm so glad this was shared with me. This is such a cool idea. Now you can be just kinda doing your own thing in character without breaking character. So let's jump, oh no, I need that. So let's just jump right in and level up this skill. I've started off way too excited. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tone this down a little bit. Let's let's mellow out together, you and I. Let's have a little bit of fun here today. Now, I decided to use my iPad just because it's kind of, I felt it was a cooler look to have this whole, like, one whole page that is just information. But you can do this for your phone or really whatever other kind of thing you'd like to hide in a book, I guess. Now, for my book, I happened to find this divination book, which is just, I mean, Tonally, it's perfect. It's exactly the theme I'm going for. But also, and more importantly, it's large enough to fit my iPad with enough margin around the corners for me to work with. So to get started, I first measured the thickness of my iPad so I knew exactly where it could kind of fit within the stack of pages. Six millimeters, in case you're curious. Now, because it is like a book of divination, it, it kind of is on theme for what I want this book to be about in the first place. I really wanted to maintain that first group of pages because it has cool information in it. Like you can actually just go ahead and look up how to read tarot cards. That's all sustained within this first half of the book. So that portion of it, I'm gonna leave untouched and I'm only gonna be working with the second half of the book. So with that in mind, I found this nice stopping point in the book with this cool imagery that I thought would work for what I'm going for. It also gives me plenty of thickness left over to still work with. Okay, so let me show you the idea with this. I'm basically breaking this down into three layers. The topmost layer makes this framework that holds the iPad into place so it doesn't fall out forward. Then there's like this middle section here that is actually cut to the exact shape of the iPad so that it fits in there snugly. And then finally, everything else that remains provides the backing to it and also gives me a place to seat my magnets in so that everything kind of sticks closed tightly. You'll get a better view of all of that as we go. I just wanted you to kind of have that primer so you could see as we move forward. All right, so knowing that's how I'm gonna break everything up, I went through the book marking off how thick I needed each section to be, taking special care to make sure that middlemost section was the same thickness as the iPad. So to keep all of those pages stuck together where I need them, I'm gonna end up using this Mod Podge here. Basically, all you gotta do is slather it on all around the outside of the pages. Then I stuck parchment paper in between the sections that I outlined just to stop them from sticking together yet. Then once everything was glued up, I just added a weight to the top and left them to dry. And as you can see, once everything's all cured up, the pages stick really well together. Now, if it feels at all a little bit flimsy, you know, like it's gonna start to come apart, you can one, add a little bit more glue to those sections, or two, just wait a little bit because we're gonna be adding more glue to the inside of those pages after we get things cut. All right, cool, so now that everything's all stuck together, we can get to cutting out the spaces we need. Like I said, for starter, this first group of pages here are gonna be a bit smaller because we want it to be able to hold the iPad into place. To figure out how small I needed that little window to be, I went ahead and measured the black border around the screen. This is kind of the borders of the screen anyway, so I thought it was an okay spot to kind of frame everything in. Keeping that measurement, one millimeter by the way, in case you're curious, I went ahead and traced out my iPad right where I would want it in the page. Then I used my one millimeter measurement to mark in where the actual cut will be made. From here, it's just a matter of using a straight edge and a sharp X-Acto blade to cut out what's not needed. And with a good sharp knife, this really didn't take very long at all. And as you can see, once the iPad is put in place, it covers out that black border perfectly and it's gonna help keep everything securely into place. All right, so now that I know that works, I can actually use that empty space as a guide to draw onto the pages below. This way we know everything's gonna land exactly center how we need it. Now for here, we're gonna be going in reverse, right? So we, we went in a millimeter in order to have that border covered. Now we need to go back out that millimeter so that the iPad fits exactly in place. To do this, I just actually put the iPad back in place so it matched up with that millimeter difference and traced all around it. Then again, it was back to cutting everything out with my knife. 
As you can see, the tablet fits super snug. In fact, it fits a little too snug. The volume button and the power button were being pressed by the sides of that space. Also, I couldn't access them. Like, I don't want to have to open up the entire book and get to it in order to use it. I need to use it right here. So to get around that, I just marked where those buttons sat with a pencil. Then proceeded to cut that space away from the framed area. I also went to the area that the iPad actually sits in and cut some of it away there as well so I can access those buttons when I need to. And so far this thing is really looking slick. Like I love how tightly it fits and the fact that it looks like just a regular book when you close it. I also went ahead and cut this little notch out here so that the camera can look out as well. Which honestly makes it look really cool. For some reason it just looks so much more badass to have that view inside of a book. It's like a book of scrying or some sort. It's really cool. I quite enjoy this. This is fantastic. All right, so we're keeping something kind of super valuable in here. We don't want to be running around and have this thing open up mistakenly and fall out. So in order to keep those sections that sandwich the iPad in place shut, I'm going to be using these nickel neodymium magnets. You can pick these up at most hardware stores. I got these ones from Home Depot. They're just really strong magnets. Using the magnet as a guide, I marked out their shape on the corner of the back cover. Then I cut it out with my razor knife, removing little layers of cardboard one at a time until it's deep enough to drop right in. I did that to both corners, by the way. Now there is an issue though, because the magnets are so thick, in order to make them sit flush, I would have actually made a hole straight through the bottom of the book. And I obviously didn't want to do that. Luckily, there was plenty of extra pages that's left kind of underneath the iPad here for us to cut into. So that's what I did, just removing little bits at a time until everything sat completely flush when closed. Next, I did the same thing on the group of pages that the tablet actually sits into. By putting the magnets here, those pages securely lock together, keeping my iPad from falling out. See that right there? It locks right tight together right there. I have to kind of pull in order to get it open. Kind of cool. Not only that, but once we glue our little framework down here, those magnets are gonna be completely hidden. Cool, so happy with the way that's coming out so far, I decided to glue down my little framing piece with some more Mod Podge. I also put a bunch inside of my cuts to really help secure everything up. Then again, I pressed it all together with weights so it stayed even. All right, so if you're making your own from here, just do whatever you want. For this one though, I decided to try to wrap this book in some fabric, mostly because I've never done it before and I wanted to give it a shot. So while my latest glue up was drying up, I busted out this nice piece of model blue fabric that I had and decided to give it a shot. Now there is an issue though. So the fabric that's usually used to kind of bind books in that way is actually a special kind of fabric that's aptly called a book fabric. Basically it's treated in such a way that's gonna stop your glue from seeping through and, and kind of messing up the surface. Luckily, turning basically any fabric into book fabric is pretty straightforward. All you really need is this heat and bond material that I bought from Michaels and some regular old tissue paper like the kind you use to wrap up gifts with. For starters, just put a piece of heat and bond cut to the same size as your fabric with its tacky side down. Then just hit the whole thing with an iron on medium heat. So that tacky side is actually a heat activated glue. So by ironing it, you're activating that glue and it's bonding itself to your fabric. Then all you have to do is remove the paper backing and you're left with this shiny glue material that's stuck onto your fabric. Next, just layer on that tissue paper to cover the entire surface. Then reactivate that glue by ironing it again. This secures the tissue paper to the back and gives you a nice barrier to stop glue from leaking through to the front. Super easy, right? Now you can like wrap any book with just kind of whatever fancy material pattern or anything you'd like. I thought that was cool. That's a neat way to like jazz up old books. All right, so since this book has kind of a shiny smooth surface, I decided to hit it with a bit of rough sandpaper just to give the glue somewhere to grab onto. Then I slathered the front cover with a bunch of Mod Podge and folded the fabric over, smoothing it down as I went. This little briar tool helps roll everything nice and smooth, but it isn't absolutely necessary if you don't have one. Now once I was all set with that front cover, I flipped that bad boy over and put more Mod Podge on the back cover and along the spine. Then I smoothed everything down here as well, paying special attention to the creases on either side of the spine. And I am really happy with how smoothly this turned out once it was dry. Like I was kind of expecting there to be an issue when you go to open the book along the, the kind of spine ridge there that the fabric would want to bunch up, but no, it stays really clean. Again, this is a cool technique, I like this. There are some additional things you need to do though before you can kind of finish it and wrap that fabric around to like the insides of the cover. For starters, here at the spine, the fabric kind of wants the bunch. 
So first we make a couple of cuts in line with that spine so that we can tuck the fabric into that space underneath the pages. Next, we need to remove these sharp corners so that it doesn't bunch up and get in the way of the book closing. These I just cut to roughly 45 degrees to get them out of the way. Finally, I cut those corners of the fabric right off so that the fabric cleanly covers over itself and doesn't bunch up. And with those cut and ready to go, I applied a boatload of glue to them. Then just folded them over into place. I also did the same thing to that little bit of fabric left over for the spine. And check out how slick this little thing is. It looks pretty and clean and opens like a regular old book. Also, my little magnets hold super strongly. I was, I was really happy with this. The whole time I was just expecting something catastrophic to happen because I, I haven't ever done this before. But seriously, it's a really easy project. I, I like this one a lot. So when this idea was first presented to me, uh, one immediately I was like, yes, we're doing that. In fact, I moved other projects aside to get that one done. But also because I'm the least creative member of this business, I asked Middle Miss Red to draw me up something to get me started. So with that base drawing to kind of play off of, I started by making a little vignette around the book with my airbrush. This is just gonna add a little bit of extra depth and make it look a little less flat. Now, as you can see, the little picture she drew has this cool kind of metal design in the middle with like a, a fancy portal in the background. Fun story, that fancy portal in the background was supposed to be broken up CDs. She's been trying to get me to do projects where you like cut up CDs and stuff. And then honestly, it looks cool. Like the foil from CDs can be taken apart and, and made like a mosaic of. It's a cool idea, it really is. But like, I thought I had a bunch of CDs and I don't. And I didn't wanna buy, I don't even know. Where do you buy CDs nowadays? Anyways, that was the intention in the drawing. I went my own way, what can I say? But to get that cool little metal lattice work done in the first place, I just kind of offloaded the task to my Cricut cutter. Now, I want these projects to be something that anybody can do, and you don't have to have a Cricut cutter. You can make this out of chipboard or cardboard or whatever and just use a basic razor knife. It's not that complex of like a design that I use. And again, you don't have to make the same design. You can make whatever you want. Just stick a whole bunch of stuff to the cover. But I'm lazy and I have a Cricut cutter, so Cricut cutter. <laughs> Of course, why not? Now to give it that metallic finish, I first primed it with a bit of gesso just to give it a good base coat. Then I hit everything with this metallic silver acrylic paint. And this actually did a pretty fair job of giving it a nice metallic shine. Now to spice it, I'm gonna spice it up a little bit and because I can't, I can't not use leather in a project, apparently. I decided to bust out these two pieces of scrap leather I had left over from when I did my Spider-Man bag project. Up here, in case you're interested what that looked like. Also, guys, Maddie's picking on me because I use leather in every project. I, just, I love it so much. Plus, I have so much of it. Actually, you know what? In the comments, leave hashtag leather. I'm going to pick one of you at random, and I'm going to send you just a scrap box of leather. Or a box of scrap leather. That's better. Most of them are pretty sizable pieces about this, but, you know, you can make keychains out of it, wallets out of it. It's just a, I have a lot. I have like three years worth of scrap leather. But anyways, this piece of leather fits perfectly along the spine, so I just went ahead and stuck it together with a little bit of contact adhesive. All right, so to make that cool kind of shining bit that was supposed to be CDs, I actually found this really cool holographic foil material made by Cricut. And it's especially cool because it's iron-on, so you just kind of make whatever shape you want to make, you put it over fabric, and you can iron it into place, and it stays put. Which is perfect, because our book is, you know, covered in fabric. So I just cut this out to the same sh overall shape of our little metal bit there, and then stuck it where I wanted it on the book. Then covered it in parchment paper just to protect the book as I ironed it into place. And once I peeled off the plastic covering, it left me with this really badass holographic kind of pop of interest. I really like that. I think, look at that. Yeah, that's kind of cool right there, right? That's neat. <laughs> it's the little things. To stick on that little metallic lattice work, I just use Super 77 from 3M. This stuff bonds pretty much instantly, so just make sure you're careful when you're placing it. Around this time, I also just decided to add a pop of color to the pages, just because, honestly. But check out how sick that looks. The whole thing is coming together so slick. That being said, from here, I had a super creative block. Like, I didn't know, it would look cool, but it was very flat, right? And I, I did not know where to go from there. Luckily, last night, actually, I had the live stream where I was like, hey, everyone, I need ideas because I got nothing. And everyone on the live stream was super supportive and, and just saying, you know what? Just have fun, you're overthinking it. And they were right. I think with most of my projects, I overthink it so much that 
I forget that it's supposed to be just kind of a fun project. So with that in mind, I grabbed just a crap load of these little findings that I have and just started placing them in areas that I thought would look cool. Then I simply secured them all in place with a bit of hot glue. And this was actually a lot of fun. Again, I just need to get out of my head sometimes and honestly just have a good time with what I'm doing. It doesn't have to be perfect, it has to be mine. That's enough, that's fine. Okay, so finally to wrap this whole thing up, I decided to add this little strap with some contact adhesive that has a little snap that keeps everything shut. This way my book stays securely shut, protecting my iPad within. And check out how slick this thing looks! I am genuinely happy with how this thing came out. It has a cool like fancy wizard vibe to it. And not only that, but there's genuine information in it that's cool and of an arcane nature. Like check it, if you're just at a LARP and you have playing cards, you can, you can, you can read someone's future with the playing cards. It teaches you how. That's great. It's a genuine book of arcane knowledge, but you can, you can ask it questions. Not only that, but it contains a primordial being named Siri. You just need to speak the magic words and Siri will answer you. Hey Siri, how do I read tarot cards? Here's what I found from askastrology.com. Right? Come on! That's so dope! You have to admit, the technology we have today, by anybody's standard from the past, is straight up magic. If you were to bring this book to a medieval peasant, this is magic. I have a magic book! I am very happy with this. <laughs> it doesn't take much, but I am very, very happy with this. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, like and subscribe and all that stuff. Um, this is actually really cool. If you like to LARP or do roleplay or any of that kind of stuff, this really, it doesn't break character. It doesn't break that feeling. It's genuinely a useful thing. Not only does it not break character, but it fits. Like if you're somebody who has like an oracle or it's a magic book you can speak to, this is no longer like a, a character breaking thing or a mood breaking thing. This is a prop now. This is this is dope. This is really cool. God damn, I love it. All right, I gotta go. There's, I, there must be some other cool magic crap I can make. This, oh God, I love this so much. In the meantime, though, keep leveling up, you. Thank you for staying to the end screen. That kind of support is huge for this channel. Speaking of huge for this channel, let me shout out the absolute legends who are my newest high tier Patreon. In fact, I have you in my magic book. Jared Lamb, Jeff Franks, and Daniel Lund, absolute rock stars. I can't do this without you and without these amazing people who honestly make this show run. Without them, there is no skill tree. So I can't stress enough how much I appreciate you all. Hey Siri, tell these people they rock. Who do you want to send it to? Dang it. She's not a smart oracle. It's all right, Siri, you, you try your best. <laughs>